Hey guys, what's going on? Zeta Bionic here with an art tutorial on how to draw Ken Sugimori style. If you don't know who that beautiful guy is, he is the main artist slash designer, whoever, for the Pokemon series. Uh, the main reason I'm doing this instead of doing uh, Sonic Mania is one, because Skullix isn't here, two, because I'm getting really tired and lately it's just been re I've just been really tired. I've, you can tell because I'm st stuttering my words. Hey. And three, I am very lazy and I do not want to play through Flying Battery Zone. No thank you. If anything tells me from the previous Flying Battery Zone, this new Battering Zone, Battering Zone? Battery Zone is going to be one heck of a, of a female dog. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna, you know, go into it. A little mouse right here, you can see it. Uh, we're going to be trying to create an Alolan Voltorb. What you're going to need, well, what you can have, is Krita, which is currently free right now. I'd recommend grabbing that before, you know, you have to purchase it. And Photoshop CS6, uh, that one you'll have to buy, but um, there are other means of getting it. I otherwise uh, don't condone those other means, but... You know, mainly because we'll be able to recreate the organic feel of uh, Ken Sugimori's art with both of these programs. So what we're going to do first is draw a sphere. We're going to try and make uh, this Alolan Voltorb a steel type. Little, uh, dynamic or not dynamic bricks. We want the razor curve tool, and we want to create a little curve. There we go. As you can see, we're already like pretty much halfway done. I'm probably going to speed up the rest of this. So, I'll be right back once I have uh, my Pokeball design. Oh, and uh, P.S. I also like to do uh, most of this freehand, so if you're trying to get something real in-depth, uh, look up another tutorial. <laughs> anyway, speed run away!
have some half decent eyes. Uh, in turn, if I have. Er, in turn, uh, it's really good if you're making a remake or an Alolan form or whatever of a Pokemon to have a reference. Thankfully, due to two to uh, dual monitors, I uh, you know I can do things easier or more easy because grammar. Yeah. All right, back onto the speed paint. Uh, P.S. Pro tip, uh, if you're gonna add stuff like designs and whatnot on a model, make sure to do, add, or make sure to do, or fuck, make sure to add like a new layer either on top or bottom depending on, uh, if it's like a design on the outside or if it's coloring or whatever on the inside. Back to the speed paint. you guys know right now is that it's perfectly okay for uh, you to copy paste things especially if it's more of a mirrored type deal like these two ball parts right here since he's facing forward uh, these technically don't have to shift so to say although I will say this one's a little bit off so I'm gonna fix that and uh, I'll be right back all right another note here is that uh if you're sure these are in the position that you want them to be, then you can go to the previous layer and erase them. I'm personally not going to do that right now, just in case I want to shift them around again. So, uh, again, back to the fast forwarding. parts on the heavy ball. If you look at the model of the heavy ball, it has uh, basically four rounded spots, uh, two of which are on the little tops like the master ball, and then has two more dots forward, and I want to imagine that, you know, these could be a part of uh, Voltorb's eyebrows or something, like they track with his, uh, I don't want to call them eyelids, but technically they are, so... Yeah, anyhow, now I'm going to make the eyes and begin adding in a little bit more detail that uh, uh, Voltorb has, and uh, I'll be right back with that. Now I'm back. Uh, 
So this probably isn't going to turn out really good, but you know. Uh, another note, I decided to give him square looking eyes because I feel like that conveys like he's more of a steel type now. Like, he is the heaviest. He is the steel. I don't know, personally. Uh, anyhow, uh, back to the little speed thing and then I'll show you the next step. So now we have the basis for our Voltorb, in turn to be honest looking better than I expected. Uh, we'll add in a little bit more detail because uh, I'm going to be doing a thing so once again I'll be right back hopefully with uh, the final outlining and then I'll show you how to make this all thing look whole organic. Uh, begin the speed running drawing. Oops. back. Uh, another little thing that I want to point out is uh, you really want to get like smoother points at the end. I'd recommend uh, getting an application. Uh, I'd recommend getting paint tool side because when you do uh, outlining with it you can have like an automatic thinner type deal but you know it's just another application I have to buy and to be honest the controls are very complicated while uh, Krita is somewhat more simple. So uh, we're going to quickly smooth out, not with that, keep on forgetting to use the erase tool, smooth out with this, it may take a few attempts, don't be mad if it does, it's just natural, especially if this is your first time. And then we smooth out the other way, get rid of that one pixel because that could be detrimental later. And there we go, as you can see it already looks looks nice it's it's already sort of kind of you know blending in which is what we're trying to do here it sort of helps with the exaggeration that is already within a uh, guy uh, there we go yeah that looks looking that, that looks that already looks good compared to all the other flat lines you can keep the flat lines because or the curved edges because they don't look that bad but you know if you're trying to go for more realism then just do what I do. And uh, let me try it back once I get done with all this. As you can see, the pointed lines makes everything look more el natural here. But this so curse the bigger so that we can see it. Look makes it look more natural, more blended, more everything. So now that we have this, uh, you want to save the file. We'll click save. Make sure that it is PN, PNG, not PMG. You can use you know whatever. Save it to here and. We'll call it, um, we'll just call it, uh, and when you save it, uh, make sure, uh, shoot, hold up, let me just, uh, just in case. Because you don't want a clear background. You want to have the white background for our next step. So you want to click save as. 
PNG or JPEG, whatever your most comfortable file format is. I save with Lola. Click OK. Now it's saved as Alola. And we'll just double check to see if it's saved with the white background. Well, there it is. From the looks of it, it did save as with the white background. Yep, that's what we wanted. Alright. Uh, now we're going to go into uh, Photoshop CS6 and I will see you all there. Alright, so we're back and we're now in Adobe Photoshop CS6 and as you can see here we have our Alolan Voltorb opened up. As you can see it still has all the lines and whatnot and that nice crispy definition. Uh, what we're going to do right now is that up on the top left you have a whole bunch of things, page, edit, whatnot. We're going to select filter, flood, voice crack right there. We're going to select filter. We're going to go to filter gallery. As you can see here, I already have the thing selected. You want to click distort and then you want to click glass. You want to make sure the texture is frosted and the distortion will be 5 while the smoothness is 11. And it'll give this, you know, nice little uh, wavy-ish look. Like, it makes it look super legit, as you can see right here, with a nice little close-up. It looks very organic, looks like it's hand-drawn straight from, you know, a pen or whatever Ken Sugimori does. And uh, what we then want to do is, since we have everything here, make sure that, since we have now everything here, we'll just make sure that, you know, everything's good. We're going to have to fill in that line later, but that'll be fine. Uh, that's a little flaw we'll have to fix. Uh, is it like that on the other side? Uh, yeah, that's a little flaw we'll have to fix. Uh, just make sure that you remember uh, all the little flaws if you can find any. So, uh, since I can't find anything else, we're going to click OK. And if we zoom in now, it will have all those nice textures. And that's pretty much over that we're all going to use for Photoshop CS6. Uh, if you know how to use it straight up from beginning to end, then I would just suggest using this instead of having to go back and forth between Krita and whatnot. But I personally cannot figure out Photoshop, C Photoshop CS6 except for you know, using uh, this type of texture thing. Anyhow, what we want to do now is that we want to click uh, Save. And it will save it. Thankfully it has a progression bar. There we go. And uh, now we're going to reopen it in Krita. And as you can see when we zoom in, there it is. Everything is there. Now there's a few choices that you can do when uh, it comes to coloring it in. You can either use your handy dandy wand tool to click everything basically uh, do shift click and you can keep on adding everything I'd recommend adding everything available including the background and just clearing it all out it's gonna take a little while because my computer cannot do heavy loads there we go and then we can click edit then we can click cut or you can do control X and once it decides to cut everything there we go you can see it cuts very cleanly keeps uh, all that OG details and uh, now we can get into coloring I'm going to bring over the official artwork for uh, heavy ball just copy this image I'm gonna control V or I guess we can actually I'd recommend saving right now Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to go to edit. 
here we're gonna go to edit. Uh, we're gonna do paste. Paste as web, because why not? Oh god, that is <laughs> that is tiny. You can see because of how big the image is. Oh god, this this is gonna be hard. Uh, I'd recommend finding a bigger image if you could, but you know I don't want to use anyone else's art of this. Don't ever use anyone else's art to oh god help your own. I mean you could, but like don't record it at the least, not without their consent. Never do it without consent. I'm gonna put that in the back. And now we have all of our colors and references for uh, you know the art style of this. Now there are two ways you can go through this depending on which you prefer. The old art style which is basically this nice watercolory type style or you can go with the new Ken Sugimori style which is more of a you know the official art style of Pokemon they see like for instance uh, the official art of Zygarde and whatever I'll put it up on screen probably I don't know probably be too lazy to uh, anyhow I'd recommend uh, opening up a new page don't worry it won't uh, destroy anything with this one we'll just make it a uh, 1280 by 720 so that way it doesn't do that heavy of a load on my computer alright so what we're gonna do is that we, we're gonna go, go over here grab our main colors so um, this page to make it easier get a big brush size let's say something like this dropper tool on this page and we can just Get the central colors for everything. Uh, white is very easy, so uh, technically that, <laughs> that's all we need. There's technically three colors and only two that we actually need. So we're gonna get the dropper, do this, and now on our little color thing over here, we're gonna try and make it just a little bit, maybe a little bit more darker. There we go, and then we're gonna do that. Uh, maybe just a little bit darker. Once you try to uh, shade with the grays, it gets really hard to tell, especially for me, who's what and what's how. But I, I'd say that's good. I'm gonna go for the dropper for the purple. I think that's purple. I'm gonna say that's either purple or really dark blue. Sorry if it sounds like I'm far away, I'm trying to lean back into my chair. I don't have a boom arm. So I'm gonna go darker with that. How does that look? Again, a little bit darker. We can just control Z that. There we go. And now we want to grab a lighter color. So again, use your dropper. And then use your thing and then see if that's any lighter. First I want to go for the very bright because uh, you know these are basically shades for a shiny ball so we all know what to do with shiny balls. Sorry if you can hear the background, I don't have much things to do. Alright, so now we're just going to color him in with the base colors. We can disguise that for now. Uh, add a layer in the back with our little dropper tool, or with our magical handy dandy wand, we can select it and uh, fill in the background to our heart's content. It's gonna take a little while, so I'll just fast forward it. If you do a little strokes, it works.
these colors. Now we can move on to shading. My favorite. And this sort of kind of looks cool, but, you know, meh. Alright, so, as I was saying before, there are two types of shading. The old Kintsugimori style, which I'm going to say is Generation 2 and 1, and the new Kintsugimori style, which is Generation 3 onward. And in turn, we really haven't gotten much of an update when it regards to the older Pokemon like Voltorb and whatnot, unless they have like special Mega Revolutions or Alolan forms. So in turn, we're going to have to be crafty with this. The first thing I'd recommend before shading is discovering where your light source is. So I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to get something yellow. And I'm going to say our light source is right here. You know, except I'm not because that's white. I'm going to say it's going to go right here. Here's the beam. Beams of sunshine. You can remove this later. Can you, fe can you feel the sunshine? Alright, so there's the beams. It doesn't have to be this close to the source. This is just saying, hey, here's, here's where the sun's coming from. Here's where your light source is, bub. And what we're going to do now is that I'm going... If you've seen my Mega Toga Kiss, it uh, has a little pearl, or, yeah, pearl, I'm going to say, on the front of its chest, basically right before the little uh, thingies. My cat just got very bored. Uh, it has uh, basically a dark center, while the other outside is lighter. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select these guys first because there's more of them. Then there is uh, you know, anything else basically. So in turn I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create the little inside shading first. I'm going to click this. I'm going to turn the opacity of my guy to 30%. And we'll just do... I'm going to say like... oval. It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to look like it's inside of something, like it's a real sphere. Because we, we don't know what uh, Voltorb is using uh, these little spheres for. I mean, for all we know, they could be like little jewels that are like cannonballing, like right outside his head. And then there's going to be a little dark epicenter, or whatever you want to call it fancy words that I do not know because I just go by what I like. That's how most artists do, I hope at least. And for now in order to make them look natural we're going to do a technique that I learned called the layering technique. Which you just do this all around the guy. Sometimes it'll look good, sometimes it'll look bad. Again, depends on your preference of good and bad. Looks sort of good. I'm going to uh, cover back over with and just do another oval with the darker oval on the inside. There you go. Doesn't look half bad, to be honest. And it could do better. But personally, I'm not into, you know, shading balls. I, I caught myself in that one, I'm aware. I forgot exactly what I just wanted to do with it. Side a little bit with this, a little bit more layering. Sorry if you hear all the clicks, but I don't have a mic stand, and my mic is like right next to everything. And then we'll do a little bit of layering technique in 
inside of there. There we go. Looks a little bit terrible, but we can fix that easily. Pretty fucking terrible, but I'll, I'll accept it. If you guys can do better and, you know, teach me your ways, then you can go ahead. Uh, then what I need to do next is that I need to grab Shiny. And now since the light source is up here, we're gonna put, like, wheat. Make sure goes with the curve. We're just going to layer it on a classic way. Technically there is no classic way, but this this is a classic way, apparently. In my standards, I guess. Now we're going to straight up grab white. And just do a little bit of, a little bit of layering like this. Especially compared to this, this I am basically made in like an hour. The other it took me about a week. So cry, I'm a cry. And turn. Now we're gonna add some shading to the bottom here. Saying, hey, look, it's a sphere. Again, I'm not too sure how everything goes. I just do whatever I feel is personally right. And apparently, I get it. I get it good. At least to everyone's else opinions and then in turn we're gonna just highlight it just a little bit it's a little bit of highlight at the bottom not too much not too little you know as they go go. Once we get the sun equipped, as you can see, it doesn't look half bad. It's not my best, but this is, to be honest, the first time I've worked in, you know, with spears or spear type shapes. I might fix that, so in turn, I'm going to just either speed this up or cut it out, but I really want to speed this up so that way you guys can see this process. If you can work better than me, then kudos to you. So here we go. You know what? That that looks marginally better. Yeah, maybe just a just a shade of this a little bit. Because you know it's a spear. Yeah, you know, you know what? That's that's not that's not half bad. That's probably as good as it's gonna get. Note to self. All right, so I'm gonna continue speeding up for you guys. I gotta do these left. Pray to God I can do it within the time span of whatever. We're already 25 minutes in, so. Well, in the second part of the recording, I'm going to have to take multiple takes because my computer is slow AF. So, be right back and I'll show you the speed up.
that you see here, we've already done, uh, you know, these two, these two spheres, which look pretty okay. This one came out better than this one, in my personal opinion. I may fix this one later, but for now, uh, both look good. And now, uh, we'll just focus on this one, and you want to start by doing a little circle in the middle. I'll gradually, you know, increase it. Fluff it out a little bit. And then you grab the darker. And then you just let it fluff it out on the inside. And there you go, that's how, that's how you do that. And then uh, you give it a little bit of lighting, which again is just easy as this. hanging on its little eyebrows slash lashes slash whatever the hell they are. I feel bad for Voltorb. Do you ever think Voltorb gets bullied because he's like... Oh, there we go. Sorry if you heard slamming. My mouse sometimes likes to glitch out. Hashtag my mouse problems. Okay, I'm just gonna... Highlight... Find some areas. Again, I don't know shit about you know what I'm doing. I just know that it looks okay. It, it looks pretty okay. Maybe a little bit more of this over here. Make this a little bit more rounded off. See, there we go, we have a little ball of orb. Yay. Looks really good. So, in turn, I'm just going to shade this thing. I'm going to be shading uh, every part of the ball the same, and uh, the eyes are going to be following the same principle. Oh, in turn, I forgot to do some lines, so if you ever do forget to do some lines, that's perfectly fine, you can just go over it very, very easily. Just swiggle a little bit. Wrong swiggles. Uh, yeah, that's right. Like for instance, uh, he has a little thing going up here. So roughly do a crude thing of that, and as you can already see, it looks already pretty legit. Doesn't have the thing, but once it comes out, he won't even notice it. You can see, there we go. Looks better already, wouldn't you say? more definition in the eyebrows I'd say. Alright, back to shading. Shading is probably the longest part, so personally I'm going to cut out everything else. You already get the gist of shading everything. Uh, 
I'm gonna shade this, and I'm gonna actually come back to shade the rest of it because I'm gonna imagine the rest of the ball being more of a matte finish instead of a polished finish. So uh, we'll be right back when that's over. Alright, so I am back from doing the balls. I've decided not to fix this one because this one's pretty meh. It's pretty okay. It'll, it'll pass for now. We're not supposed to make it look 100% legit. You can if you want to. Just, you know, meh. Alright, so now I'm imagining the whole Pokeball as a matte finish. And not a glossy finish like uh, the spears over here. Because I think the matte finish would look nice in contraction to uh, the normal finish. Or the gloss finish. So... I'm going to now apply normal coat. So what you want to do is that since the sun has that beam going like right here, and then I'm going to say right around here, this is going to be whoop. Remember to uh, have everything thing selected. That that would be more convenient. I just go like. Sometimes doing it in a circular motion can help, uh, you know, capture the feel of everything. Since it doesn't have a gloss finish, I won't be, uh, doing anything extra to it, giving any extra gleam. Although I could, uh, if I really wanted to, maybe, I don't know, a little bit brighter. That's just about right. Yeah, I, I'd say that's just about right. I'll give it a little uh, extra highlighting. Not too much, not too little though. Maybe about right there will do. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good highlight color. In turn, uh, since light does shit, you know, light does stuff, we're gonna do this. We could uh, end it right there, but I'm going to make it fade off a little bit into he over here. Because that could make it look good. And it does. I like it. I like it a lot. I used to say, I like it a lot. And in turn, now uh, comes the real question of how we're going to do the shadow shadow. Grandmother's house it goes. Not really though, because it doesn't probably have grandma. She's probably gonna be a ditto. There we 
go. That looks good. I can get down to that. In turn, I'm going to say that this is going to give off a little bit of a shadow right here. And so do these guys. But at the same time, they technically don't. So I am not good. I'm not the best with shading spears. Which is why I decided to do a more of a matte finish on these guys with a little bit of highlights and whatnot. So we're just gonna do the best we can and pray to God it turns out okay. Bada bing bada boom, let's look at our results and oh boy, that that turned out better than I thought. Look at that, look at it go, look at it grow, look at the thing that we're making together in this experience. Uh, in turn, now we're going to go to the white selection areas. Now we're going to shade those. And to be honest, white for me is the hardest to shade. Because it's just like, you don't want to shade too much, but you don't want to shade too little. Now this may be perfect. I might have actually jinxed myself and got it. This may have seemed to be the case. shadow to the eye over here. I'll have it connect over there, which then continues that shading. Which can still continues right now. Make the shading look as rough as possible, I'd say. Make it look nice, but rough. Like, it doesn't need to be perfect. Like, the more imperfect yet accurate it is, the better it look. Just, I personally just like to smooth it out right at the ends. Just so that way, uh, the lines don't look that fugly. There we go. It's gonna be a little bit more protruding out, I guess. In fact, I'm going to have it curve right from here because this is the bottom of the spear.
and there we go, I'd say. I think this is a complete Alol Alolan Voltor. You know, I, th I think we did good. i remove that layer. Remember to do that. I think we did good. You know, we could have done better. But to be honest, this was made within the span of, I'd say, an hour to two hours for me personally. Uh, with a little bit more time and a lot more energy, I could probably do this a lot better. But, you know, we, we made this together, so feel free to, like, uh, you know, just take this as it is and maybe improve on it. Maybe make a different design. I don't know. Maybe someone out there can make me the... Well, not make me, but make the evolution of this. You know, that, that'd be nice. In turn, uh, that's basically all. Uh, make sure to watermark everything at the end. And this is basically it. There he is. There's a special boy. Actually, hold up. I can make this better. And there we go. We have our uh, we have our lone Voltorb. Still a little bit iffy about you know this little part right here, but you know what? It, it'll do. Personally, it'll do. Uh, maybe I'll remove these little bits in the future. Probably come back to it, but uh, you, you know what? It, it'll do. I personally like this a lot. I like the design. Simplistic, yet it makes it look. A lot better. Personally, I would choose this Voltorb over the regular Voltorb. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for basically this tutorial slash speed draw, whatever. And uh, I will see you all on Saturday with Digimon. I hope you enjoyed this and stay gold.